Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are talking about essential WordPress plugins. We're talking about WordPress plugins for new sites. We're talking about WordPress plugins that beginners should know. And we're talking about WordPress plugins that everyone should know about. If this sounds like something that is of interest to you, stay around for the rest of this video. So as I say, today is all about those WordPress plugins that everyone should know when they're thinking about and creating their WordPress sites. So one of the problems that people have when they create a WordPress site, they hear about plugins and then they install about 100 of them and then they realize that their site just doesn't work because if you have too many plugins, basically the whole thing comes to a halt. You know, particularly if you've just got a run of the mill average hosting package, you know, there are limits on what those sites can do. And if you've got too many processes in the background, it is going to, you know, it's going to just grind to a halt and it's going to be no good to anyone. So you want to get plugins that are actually of use to you uh, and use to your site, okay? Not getting dead weight, okay? So in this video, we're going to be talking about you know, some of the more essential ones and the ones that I prefer, okay? So if this video is of any help to you, please give us the thumbs up button. We really do appreciate it. Makes, uh, let me know that this has been a useful video. And of course, jump down in the comment section if that is if that is what floats your boat. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're updated and notified as and when there are new videos. So let's get onto my desktop and start looking within WordPress and I'm going to go through these plugins. So here we are, we're on the old uh, dashboard, we're in WordPress, in the left hand side it says plugins and this is where we can find, we can upload them if we've got them um, or we can search for them. So first one, Elementor Page Builder, okay. This is what it looks like when you search for it. MLS page builder, it's got this logo and what it's gonna do, it's gonna put a menu uh, here on the left-hand side, uh, but also when you create a new post, so let's just create a new post. Now I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll, we'll create a page. We'll create a page for this one. Uh, we'll create a page just as a test. And I'll show you now in WordPress. There is they've changed in the last few years uh, the whole setup. You've got this slightly different, um, slightly different uh, design of it. Uh, but essentially, I'm just going to put a test in there. I'm going to click publish, and I'm going to click publish again. Um, and once that's done at the top, we have this big button that says Edit with Elementor. I'm going to click on that, and this is going to take us out of the traditional WordPress environment. Um, and it's going to take us across uh, to the Elementor page builder. Now, I really like this because it is uh, so much more advanced. There are so many more options. And essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to create a variety of different pages. So you can see this is just the page, the traditional page that I'm on. But what I have the ability to do is I can go to the settings here and I can go down to page layout and click elements or canvas and I can create uh, pages that are completely from scratch um, which is very unusual for WordPress. WordPress usually enforces the top bar and the sidebars and all these sorts of things you know and then I, what I can do is I can create different types of columns here and then I can go across the left hand side and we have all of these different drag and drop things text I can text I can pull across. I've got buttons, icons, Google Maps, images, videos, loads of different things. I'm ability to change the size of them, uh, you know, change how they interact. It is absolutely brilliant, and it's one of my uh, my favorite plugins. We use this plugin in all of our courses to show people how to make uh, beautiful looking websites. In the last course, 
um, that was triple triple traffic bots, where we show people how to create their own websites and how to um, get leads from all different places in once. Really, really popular. If you want to check it out, that's going to be in the description below. But let's just go back and start looking at the next one. The second uh, plugin is duplicate post. So we'll just go back to the plugin section here, just so I can show you the exact one uh, to get. So we're gonna go to add new. And we're gonna go on search and we're gonna be looking for duplicate post. There's a few that are called like duplicate page or post. The one that I personally prefer is duplicate post. It's by Enrico Batocci here. Now, when I go to my posts, once it's installed, what it does is it allows me to just hover over and click on this clone button here. As you can see, that's not usually there. And basically it will duplicate what a post that I've already done uh, in draft mode. I can change the title and then I can go in and make a few changes. So it's really useful if I want to make a load of different uh, pages that are very, very similar. And you, know, you don't have that on the basis of WordPress. I have no idea why, but you don't. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Um, and this one is by Add Funk. Um, and it's called Add Funk Head and Footer. Okay. Here we go. Add, add Funk Head and Footer Code. Now, building sites, there's all different types of things that you might want to put on your site, but you don't want it to be visible. You want it to be in the background, okay? Things like uh, Facebook pixel codes and such, tracking codes, other things that are connecting to other sites. You want them and you need them to be on the front page. Um, you need them to be on the page, but you, you know you want a place where you can show them. And again, this isn't particularly easy to do um, on um, WordPress natively, okay? So let's go back to our posts again and take a look at one. So we're gonna click on edit. And what we'll do is we're gonna scroll down. And you can see here at the bottom here, head and footer code, I'm able to put in code uh, for the header and the footer and I'm able to change it uh, site-wide as well. So we need page and site, okay? That is really, really important for putting in these tracking pixels. Now, next one, we're jumping through, we're onto the fourth WordPress plugin, okay? And this is one that if you know about um, plugins, you probably will have heard of it. And this one is the classic Yoast SEO. And this is what it looks like here. Okay, so we get some settings um, here, the SEO, and we can go through that and do some site-wide information. But what's uh, the most important for me, let's go back to our post and choose uh, one of our posts again, click on edit. What it does is it put in a whole host of settings at the bottom of each post in the edit of the page. Now this is really cool once you've actually created the post because what it does is it puts in this information here and it shows us how it's going to be seen in terms of Google search. And it gives us um, some information here. You know, you've got readability anal analysis, we can click on that. And it comes out of all different, it assesses what we've done and it tells us what we've done good and what we've done bad, okay? So we can see, you know, how it, how it reads. Uh, so we can go in and we can actually make some changes. That's what's really cool because obviously, uh, one of the things that Google looks out for is, you know, the quality of the work, okay? So you can go in, you can make changes. Obviously, it has information here about uh, keywords, you know, because obviously that helps with SEO because if you want to rank for specific keywords. Now, obviously, also at the top here, we can actually click um, on how it's displayed on Google and actually make changes. So I clicked on it and now I can change the slug I can change the meta description, so this is how it's found, how it's presented, which is really, really important. Now we've got uh, bits about sharing, so we can change the, uh, the Facebook title and the description. So if someone copies our link and pastes it in Facebook, we can make sure we have the, uh, the best possible text shown in those locations. 
And then we've got some other bits and pieces here about search, okay? So we can significantly improve our SEO and our ranking uh, potential with this plugin. That's why this is so, so vitally important, okay? So let's go on to plugin number, plugin number five. So plugin number five is the smush, smush, oh, state there, smush image, Smush image compression and optimization plugin. So what this does is it puts in another menu on the left hand side that we can click on. And this basically compresses the images on your website so that your website loads quicker. So again, SEO, Google search will rank you higher if your website is faster. Everyone knows that. So you can go in here and you can go in and you can click the button to check the images and it will check all the images on your site. Um, and then you can uh, basically smush them. So it basically optimizes them, it compresses them, uh, retaining the quality, really clever how it does that. Uh, and then essentially what it's gonna do is it is going to uh, show them, show your website quicker. That's all we need to know and we know that it works. You can go in the settings and you can set it so that any new images that are uploaded to your site automatically are optimized, okay? So this is one you do at the start and then it kind of works for you uh, as you're using your site, okay? So that is really, really important. So the next one, we're gonna go back and show you that one so we get the right one as usual. This is the sixth, sixth one. And this one is a limit login attempts okay limit login attempts reloaded this is a simple plugin once it's installed it's you go to the settings on the left hand side scroll down to limit login attempts and essentially what this does is it is going to limit the amount of times that people can put in the wrong username and password into your site this will basically limit the chances of people hacking into your site, okay? Because if you don't, people can just try it a million different times until they get your password and username, you know, all correct, okay? So you wanna go in there and you wanna set that up and it will then track it and it will give you some stats to show you how many times people have tried to access your site, okay? But because you've got it there, it's doing its good job, okay? So, now we're going into just the final two ones that I like. Um, one that I actually like is just a visual one that I kind of always recommend to people to get. Um, and that is basically the mass share uh, buttons for social media. They just look better than everything else. Um, you know, I'm just gonna, that, this is it. I'll just show you with the screenshots there. Um, and you can see these really cool buttons. It tells you how many times it's been shared. You know, it just looks really, really cool, these ones. I love these big, fat, chunky buttons. They just look so cool. Uh, so, you know, that's one that I always, I always recommend people to get as well, just from a visual capacity. But let's move on to the next one, which is BJ Lazy Load. Now, this one will, will be covered in time by Smush. Okay, you're seeing it. This is what it looks like here, BJ Lazy Load. And essentially, once we have installed it, what it does is once your website is loading, it will only load the images that it needs. It won't, like as soon as you go onto the website, typically what happens is that all of the images on that page are loaded at the same time. So, you know, as we spoke about just a few seconds ago that, you know, the slower your site is, the, you know, the, you know, Google are gonna, you know, penalize it. They want quick loading the site. So you stick it on, it's gonna just quickly load the site and then as you scroll up down the page, it's gonna load the images as and when they, or if they are required, okay? But as I say, Smush actually has a beta part of this in their plugin. So as that becomes uh, mainstream within their plugin, you might be able to get away with that unless they stick it into their pro version. So there you go. They were the essential WordPress plugins. They're the plugins, the WordPress plugins, uh, that I suggest everyone gets involved with when they get a new site. 
I hope this video has been of interest, benefits you. If it has, hit that thumbs up button and of course, please subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified as and when every single time there's a new video. Um, we'll see you in the next video coming soon.